Hey, this is Overpass Insights. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today I want to talk about how to make sure your business app can't be seen by competitors. All right, so today I want to answer a question that came in from Joe Stalker about two weeks ago. I'm sorry it's taken me so long to get to this question. Uh, Joe says, Eric, I need to lock down an app so it can only theoretically be used by a small customer base. It has a QR code reader which allows them to download slash view manuals of machinery they have purchased and coded serial numbers or QR in the QR. I uh, just want to make it more difficult for a competitor to walk up and use the app to scan and make off with design drawings and other user data. User base is about 50 customers per year. If you have a walkthrough for this, I'm happy to pay. Uh, just out of the, just out of my wheelhouse. App is native Android, Java, and iOS Swift, and working in test environments. Thanks. So, Joe, this, the reason I really like this question is because this is the kind of stuff that we do all the time. A lot of my business customers, or most of our our clients, are businesses, and that's one of the questions we get asked all the time. How can we make sure our competitors don't see this, or how do we make sure that only our employees do it? So we talk about like a lot of the distribution methods, like we could either go through the Apple distribution methods so that only certain users can get it, or uh, through, the, uh, through Android, like how do you limit the APK to only certain people. But most of the time, my biggest recommendation is always, like if I have my preference each time, is that we have like really strong username and passwords. So username and passwords, and it's by invite only. So, and this is, I do this diagram all the time when I talk to clients, but like, you know, we have like your standard, you have your standard API, so you've got like your, your database there, right? You've got your API, and then you have your app, Android and iPhone. So those both connect to there. Fine, cool, like your typical stuff, right? Database, API, database access, but then also you have your admin website off here to the side so that the admin could go through and add users. So we make it invite only, which means that users can download, anyone can download the app if we put it onto the app store. And that's one of the things we tell them. Anybody can download it, but you know, if you know what the app stores are like, people aren't just downloading apps for nothing. They have to have a reason. And if you want your competitors do it, we have to make sure that they, they can't log in so they don't have a password, which means we do not allow anyone to register. No one can register everything has to be invite only. And usually we mean in the admin site, we will have like a, a user's screen. So you'd go in there and you would select add user and that basically you add their email address and whatever information you want to have about them. That triggers off an email to the, to the users themselves to say with a link to the Google Play Store, when it's on the Google Play Store and the iOS, the App Store whatever, yeah, the app store. And then they can download either version, but they have to use a username and password that they've been sent. They can't request it. I mean, they could change the password so they remember what it is, but they, it's by invite only. And then that way, here you can go through and you see when's the last time everybody's logged in and you could also remove them. Now that's a kind of a complicated situation. Like if you have a really low budget client and you start to propose this, like, you have to have somebody go in and administer your users, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Sometimes they won't go for that. So if that's the case, then you have to like limit the distribution of it as opposed to limiting. So we talk about limiting access or limiting distribution. If we're limiting access, you, we, you kind of need to have some sort of username, passwords, and user authentication, some sort of control there. But if we're just limiting based on, on access or yeah, no, for limiting based on distribution, then we have to go through the different ways. So usually with an APK, we'll just, we'll give them the APK, we we'll set up like, usually what they'll do, and I, I always say you should have like a web page where people can go through and just download it, uh, but you know, but no, most of the time I think they just put it on a shared drive someplace, right? Because they just, I don't know, you know they, they don't like my technical solutions. Uh, the, on the iOS side, it's much more difficult. So you basically, there, you have two methods if you want to like limit distributions. You can either do it through the like, volume purchasing program, VPP, which is now part of Apple Business Manager. So they kind of phase out a uh, volume purchase program. And what that does is it allows you to release the app to the App Store and only grant it to certain companies. So they would set up their Apple Business Manager 
you have the ABM account, and they would add however many iPhones or iPads they have on it from their for their users, and then you would say only this organization could use this, or only these organizations could use it, and they would just go to the App Store and see it like normal. The other way is through enterprise um, enterprise distribution. So I have to go through and get an enterprise portal, an enterprise certificate, and then that would actually allow you to distribute the application by by generating the IPA and a manifest file, and you put it like on a website within their internal environment. Now the downside of distribution is, I mean you could like limit it to a local network, but the downside of that is that if they leave, you don't have any control to like revoke access, which you do if you have the, the, the authentication model here. And again, it's like, it's getting them to do that. It's a bigger project to do it that way. But every time, like if I have my preference, I'm always proposing this. Sometimes I say, no, we don't want to go through the whole user thing or we just want to have, we just want to be able to connect with that device via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or whatever. We don't want to have to have usernames and, and logins and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, but that's usually that's the kind of stuff we do. So that's the ways that we distribute it for for companies, and you, you can never make it 100% secure. Like you can't ensure that an employee downloads the application, takes it someplace else, or he loses his phone or whatever. Unless it's a login thing, you know, unless you use pin code or or fingerprint or biometrics and stuff like that. But this is the the fun kind of stuff when you talk with your clients, discuss that kind of stuff with them because yeah, your business your business clients don't want to do it now. You do have to make sure that when you release it to the app, if you do release it to the app store, you have to give the reviewer a test login. So, you know, that's one of the things. Uh, also, um, yeah, you have to make sure that they have the test login. And also your screenshot should be just the, the pre-login screen. Like you don't need to go and show the, the stuff because then the competitors can get that too. So and for the rest of you guys out there who you do work for, for business clients, how do you distribute and how do you limit access to those kind of stuff? But this is, this is usually the model that I go with. So anyway, let me know what you guys think. That's it for today. I'll talk to you guys again tomorrow. Oh.